back so soon. I knew you would not falter. Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Hand of Fate. In the last two dungeons, we defeated the Jack of Dust and the Jack of Skulls, encountering bandits and skeletons. With this new dungeon coming up today, we will go against the Queen of Dust. Another round, and our game truly begins. Now, I lied a little last time. The game is not quite done telling us about new mechanics, and the biggest new set of mechanics that will be introduced here are curses and blessing. Blessings, sorry. In this case, fighting the Queen of Dust gives us the money bags curse throughout the entire dungeon. Gold will weigh us down, though any way we have to get rid of gold will be useful and help us in combats we encounter. A bold woman, this one. She did not collapse when the Empire did. No, she took up arms, organized her people, and vowed that in a country where death had gathered, she would be the one dealing it. Sounds pretty badass. Let's start with the recommended decks, just to make our life easier. Looking at equipment, there's not too much we need to do. Every single bit of new equipment is represented in some form at the bottom, so we'll have a chance to identify a lot of stuff, including the medium armor, since we have two of it. We're pretty set. Fates, I'll be holding off. When we get to further dungeons and when we get to endless mode, I'll go ahead and start having a look at those. Encounters, though, I want to change up a little. I can't really remove all of the DLC stuff without replacing it with some encounters we've already seen. I just want to make sure we get all the non-DLC new encounters in our deck able to be visited. And then... When we start it with Endless Mode, we'll have a better opportunity to go look at DLC stuff. This should be good. Now we play for the cup first of my symbols. You didn't think we were just playing for nothing. No. We actually have prizes to look forward to. I've added some cards to spice up the game. In addition to the pain and gain decks, there are now blessings and curses. Choose your steps carefully. Fortunately, none of the blessings and curses we'll encounter right here are too bad. You might think the world of the cards is grim. Yet, even in the darkness, there is light to be found. Oh, the maiden. For once, gold is not a really good answer, and food is always worthwhile. So, food it is. I'm sure you are grateful for that. Much like in the previous encounters. Choose from these options. Looks like the dealer has set up this first uh, first level specifically to let us get ahead. Ah, ice. Ice is very useful. Um, and as you can tell, it's because we will eventually go against Lizardmen. 
We won't see them in this dungeon, but we're getting a little hint as to what goes on later. And this is one of the first weapons we get, which actually has a weapon ability. Much like artifacts, they can be activated in combat. Really? Is that what you're going to do? One more step down, and we may see the end of this, or another set of stairs. Nope. Still early enough in the game, let's just make sure to get everything we can. Ah, Mr. Lionel. This time, no gold. So, food is pretty safe considering how much we have. Especially now that we have Fortitude's Breath. Descend ever deeper into the subterranean pit. This game is still only beginning. New rules, new tools, new abilities. We have far to go as yet. Yeah. One of our first DLC cards. A challenge for you, and a token if you succeed. Take the token, it is yours. That token was given away exceedingly easily. That won't be the last time. Unfortunately, a couple of the DLC cards, especially the first ones, will give you their tokens just for visiting the card. Not all of them are like this, but it's a little bit of a shame. Unfortunately, no gold, not enough for items. Priests, gods, and eternal damnations. I have no trap with any of it. Ah, the priest now play for a token. is very nice. Although the price is steep, especially since we're going to be a little bit gold limited here, it'll almost certainly be worth it. Probably. This one's probably okay. Yep. Oh yeah. Best possible outcome. And we will get our first blessings as a reward. Now, blessings. Blessings will remain always active and are never removed. Unless you die, of course. Then you're back where you began, as always. No, he's not quite telling the truth here. Blessings are the opposite of curses. They provide you a bonus anytime you have them. Uh, some of them are for combat, some of them are not. But there are a couple ways to lose blessings that don't involve dying. Now, Useful. Unfortunately for us, the blessings that we have are not actually as good as I would have liked. Um, the blessing that gives gold is not going to be great. In an environment where we have a curse that makes it worse for us to have gold, makes it worse for us to have gold.
Again, a token is at stake. the goblin wants us to go treasure hunting nothing wrong could ever possibly come of that it's better than trudging along a muddy road certainly You are close on her trail, and more confident than I had imagined. Huh? Perhaps you will play beyond this mark, and we will see your true metal. Well, this is fun. This is one of the first layouts we see that really has a branching path, unlike the one in the second dungeon. Now, one of these paths obviously goes to our destination, and the other one... You could look at it as risk versus reward, but you could also look at it as a time waster. The game wants you to spend your resources, and we only have eight food. We will start starving. With this, we get a new service. Some shops will also let you heal wounds. We're at full health right now, so we don't need to worry about it. It would be a way of getting rid of gold if we wanted to. There are a couple other shops yet, and some of the shops will also let us buy blessings or remove curses. Always make sure to identify everything. It's basically a gimme. Now, since I do have a little bit of gold, I can't get the 10 food here, but I might as well just spend what I can, especially if I have two paths to go down. Every step you take consumes food, but you will also heal as you proceed. Terrifying walk to get to the Queen. So many potential places for an assailant to get the upper hand. Once again, the dealer is a bastard. Although failure is not great, and losing max health isn't great. Oh dear. Uh, this is not the worst outcome it could have been. But this is pretty bad. We haven't bought a helmet. We haven't really come across any gold. And... Ouch. These pain cards are quite possibly the best thing to happen to us right now. I was incredibly lucky right then. Bandits, eh? Make an enemy of one, and you've made an enemy of all. One can't help but admire their single-mindedness. The enchanted weapon 
works pretty much like any weapon while I'm using it. Just kill, slice, does damage. We'll see the ability in the next fight. That's the game basically, playing a joke on us there. On the other hand, we do have a shop behind. We could come to it later. I like this demon. He lies as often as he tells the truth. Devil's choice is fun. We might fight what we expect and we might not. So let's not tempt fate. Making the hardest. And he just lets us fight it outright. Better the four of dust than both the three and the two at once, which is another possible outcome. Abilities are used just like artifacts. You press the right button and the weapon ability will immediately fire. It'll take a little bit of time to recharge, after which you can use it again. And unlike artifacts, weapon abilities don't have a maximum number of uses, which is incredibly nice. Only problem is aiming them. By playing with a keyboard and mouse, I can only really go four directions. Eight, if you count the diagonals. And right here, I make what could have been a horrible mistake. The Explorer's Helmet would be nice for exploration in any other context. Chains for armor, as you will. But... The dealer's not done with his traps. Still, we're coming up against a annoying boss. So, Chains of Rage is certainly not bad. More health to work with. Much good mate, do you? The Again, the stones tumble upon you. This is exactly why I should have just taken the helmet. But the game was merciful and made this one easy to follow. This is an example of why the weapon abilities can be kind of annoying. As I was saying earlier, aiming is a little bit finicky, and that right there was an example of aiming way out of the way. If your character is turning one direction, you have to kind of turn lightly and hope that where you go will end up right. When you get it right, it's fantastic. Although, effects aren't necessarily always the best. Frostfang, although it said it was good against Lizardmen, is very good at giving you a little break in combat. Clearing out a couple enemies from the attack queue. Let you take a breather. Poison. It's the tool of the traitor. 
Uh, that's really interesting and made coming all the way to this fork worth it. Artifacts give you powerful abilities to use in combat. We'll use it against the queen. But for now, we actually got gold. And we hit double back, so it's time to stock up. So another helmet a helmet might be good just to not repeat the same mistake and angel's wing and faster movement is very nice Move quickly from here there is little material gain to be made I interrupt you sorry especially since we now have medium armor and medium armor blows us down a little bit make ourselves lighter just buy food why not Fortunately, traps don't reactivate. An accident or a trap. But I wonder. New ones are always there. Well, at least this time I had a helmet. And just regular health loss right now is not so bad. Admittedly, I could have just left. We're almost the queen. The dealers basically said as much. And we don't actually need the gold for anything here. So attacking was maybe not the smartest of decisions. But I can't deny it's uh, satisfying to just bash a couple of bandits heads in. Especially after they just tried to kill me with a bunch of rocks. They're really dodging from their prone positions, though. Makes finishers a little bit annoying. A strong left arm is as important as a strong right arm, after all. <laughs> the artifact that we have is far more useful than something that gives us gold right now. As you plunder the secrets of your memories, you'll gain new cards. Some you'll wish you'd left untouched. Well, if this game teaches us anything, is that if you want to get ahead, uh, you sometimes have to do something really, really stupid. Stay hidden is not the correct choice here. Four of Hell. Though so we've already seen the Dust Suit, we've seen the Skull Suit. Hell Suit is a little bit different. It's not one of the four main suits we fight against in the storyline. The Hell Suit here looks a little bit like Ratmen. Now, Ratmen are an enemy that we will come against in the future. But the hell are a little bit more twitchy, and you may have already noticed that they like to have unblockable attacks just pop out. Little warning. 
And the only way that you can really dodge them with, and not get hit at all is just be fast. However, like right there, it's really easy to get hit. You'd think ice would be more useful against them since they're hell and fire and everything, but no, as far as I can tell. Ice weapons don't do any particular extra damage to them. Well done. Thank you. Nice to be acknowledged. Noble causes turn to rotten enterprise. You may win this battle and send the queen to her rightful end. Yet, what have you gained in the process? Well, in this case, a card token. Let us stake a token on their foolishness. When we were fighting the Jack of Skulls, we got to see muskets in action, and those were unblockable. But this Arbalest here, that comes along with the Queen of Dust, is one of the first blockable ranged weapons, or just block ranged enemies, rather. Whenever it's about to fire, a little thin uh, diamond appears on top of it, and soon after, a crown symbol will appear on top of our head, and that's a signal to start blocking. We do get telegraphed attacks then, that's very nice. And because ranged attacks are really annoying, it's a fantastic idea to get rid of this Arbalest ahead of time, before you really take anything else down, or it will just keep shooting at you. It just don't care. It's also good if you can avoid the Queen of Dust, since she rather likes to um, attack with a combo of unblockable attacks. So, we'll poison her. And sometimes she likes to just power up and do all the combos all the time, no more blockable attacks for you. At that point, it's a back and forth attack, dodge, attack, dodge. But Frostfang is very useful for getting this done faster. Inevitable, I suppose. So often those who beat Plowshare to sword die by the grim instruments of their industry. Still, she fought well, and bravely, which is all I expect from my pawns and players. Ah, uh, we get the goblet. So, now we know a little bit more about what we're here for. We are actually going after the dealer's symbols of power, and the goblet is the first one we get, after defeating the first three members of the court. Each of the items is an upgrade to the game. So, first, It'll make our counterattacks stronger, our stun attacks last longer, and it'll also give us new starting equipment, which is always welcome. But it'll also increase the bandits and skeleton strength, and we will now have to contend with bandits with throwing knives everywhere we go. This is a straight upgrade for every mode of the game. You have earned the first of the symbols of my power and passed the first gate. There is no turning back now. Previously I was merciful, but now I cannot be. It is begun. I crafted each of these cards over the course of years. You have
have taken them from me in mere moments. So I'm a little bit torn about the DLC cards. On one hand, the Indecent Arrival card gave us an encounter immediately, and that was enjoyable and fun. On the other hand, two DLC cards we encountered, and some more we'll also see, just had a little bit of story and immediately gave us their token. Which, on one hand, it's not the most exciting thing in the world. On the other hand, it's a little bit of a lead up and not having encounters all the time is not bad. But we are advancing through them quickly. That will change and progress will become harder. Come, play again. Now that we've acquired the goblet, the first of the dealer's trophies, we are ready to advance the Jack of Plague, our fourth boss, and the last boss we need to defeat before we can finally try Endless Mode. We'll take down the Jack of Plague, and then we'll have some fun in a pretty long dungeon, depending on how far we make it. See you next time.